So I have here with me the new M3 MacBook Pro. And if you just picked one up like I did, there is a few quick settings that we can change to make your experience more productive and just overall more visually appealing. You probably just spent a massive amount of money on your new MacBook, so you might as well go ahead and spend a few extra minutes now customizing it and ensuring you have a device that's tailored just for your needs. Now I did go ahead and add chapters below, so feel free to jump around if you already know how to do something or if you're just looking for something specific. Many studies show that if you enjoy the space that you're working in, or in this case, the device that you're working on, you're more likely to be more productive. So the most basic thing that we can do to ensure we have a little bit of personality into our MacBooks is change our wallpaper. And I know that may seem elementary to some, but this is for those of you who might be new to MacBook or just switching over from a Windows laptop. And if you did just switch over from Windows, be sure to stick around as I have a few other tips that'll make your transition a little easier. So for example, say you want that new black wallpaper that we've been seeing all over the advertisements. And in order to do that, we're gonna open up system settings, scroll down to wallpapers, and then you can find it under the pictures tab. But of course, pick whichever one you want here. There's many different options to choose from. We have cityscapes, landscapes, artwork, and even dynamic wallpapers that'll change throughout the day. Also, while you're in here, don't forget to set your screensaver. Now, kind of staying on the same subject is screen resolution. You just purchased either the 14 or the 16 inch version of the MacBook, so you might as well optimize it and take advantage of as much real estate as you can. And in order to do this, we'll just jump back into system settings real quick and then find display. Then by selecting more spaces, it'll change the resolution size, giving you more room to work with. Now, I will say if your eyesight isn't the best, then this might not be ideal. And obviously, just because I prefer it this way, you might want to go with, say, making it larger. Just keep in mind, though, this will kind of do that whole stretch to fit kind of thing. And not all applications will fit entirely on the screen. The next thing that I'm going to talk about can really add some productiveness into your daily routine if implemented correctly. And that's the use of widgets. With the release of Mac OS Sonoma earlier this year also came the ability to pull widgets and add them directly to our desktop. And the easiest way to accomplish this is by clicking on the date and time in the top right hand corner of your screen. And now you have your widgets displayed in front of you. Now I've already edited mine, so it probably looks a little different from what you're seeing, but in order to edit yours, just go to the bottom and you'll see this little edit button. And that pulls up this widget screen where you can browse through any available widgets that you can use. It is worth mentioning, though, that these widgets are pulled from a second year device like your iPhone. So if there's any other widgets that you would want to see here, you're going to want to make sure you have the associated app downloaded on your iPhone. Once you've selected the widgets that you want, they'll be added to your little sidebar menu here. And from here, you can either move them around or delete them. And then to add them to your desktop is pretty straightforward and simple. Just hold them and drag them and then drop them wherever you want them. You will notice if you open up any other application on your MacBook that these widgets will fade to this monochrome color, but if you prefer that they stayed full color the entire time, what we're gonna wanna do is navigate back to our system settings and find desktop and dock. And under the widget settings, you can change it from automatic to full color. And this little portion is also where you can actually change the iPhone that your MacBook is pulling in the widgets from. Next, let's take a look at some of our lock screen settings. Whether you use your MacBook on the go, plugged in, or with an external display, the default settings will quickly start your screensaver or put your device to sleep. But with the impressive battery life of the MacBooks these days, or the fact that you're always utilizing one of your Thunderbolt ports, you may want to increase the time that that takes to happen. We can do that right here under the lock screen settings. So for mine, I'm going to elect for the screensaver to start after 10 minutes. And while on battery, the display to turn off after half an hour. Under the same settings is where you can also choose to display a clock for both your lock screen and screensaver. And I think it looks pretty cool, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for both. And for another little touch of customization, while we're in here, you can actually add a custom message to be displayed when your screen locks.
If your new MacBook happens to be the first one that you've ever purchased, or you know, you're just like me and only ever grew up with Windows computers in the household, then you're really gonna love this next tip. And that's changing our secondary click. So back in system settings, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and locate trackpad settings. The default Mac OS setting for secondary click is tapping with two fingers. But if you spent your entire childhood clicking in the bottom right hand side of the mouse, that's all right, we can change that right here and save a lot of headache trying to remember to double tap. Something that can really help optimize productivity is the use of hot corners. Now, hot corners will allow you to quickly start actions when you move your mouse to one of the corners on your screen, and these do come enabled by default. So while we're still here in system settings, I'll show you how you can map them out. Now we're gonna scroll back up and find desktop and dock. And if you go all the way to the bottom of this section, we'll see this little button for hot corners. Go ahead and click on it, and then it'll bring up the map menu. And I already went ahead and mapped mine out, uh, but there's plenty of different options here to choose from. So find one that works best for you, and this is what the finished product looks like. So real quick, I have two quick bonus features for you guys. And the first of the two was a new feature introduced this year, and that's the ability to add web applications. So in order to do this, we'll quickly open up Safari and then navigate to the website that we wanna make the application for. And I'll give Motion VFX some love here. Then find File in the top left-hand side of your screen and select Add to Dock. And voila, it's now visible in our dock. Please keep in mind though that this currently only works with Safari, so if you're using any other browsers like Chrome or anything else, you're kind of SOL for the time being. And then the second bonus piece can hopefully help you find any of your folders quicker, especially if you have many different folders stored on your desktop. You know, for the most part, all the folders look pretty much identical and this little trick can help them stand out. So what we're going to want to do is find an image on Google that we'd want to put in place of our blue folder. And then once we find the one that we want, go ahead and right click on it and save it to our downloads. Now, once again, locate it in your downloads, right click, select quick actions, and then remove background. Now back to my top secret folder, we'll right click on it, select get info, and then drag the photo from our downloads over to the folder icon until we see this little green plus sign. And there you have it custom folder icons. You guys want to see what's in my top secret folder?